All right, YouTube, welcome back. All right, the water and the tank is there's some changes. Um, I finally figured out what was going on with the system. Well, the second phase of the problems. So let me go over that with you because uh, I feel it's worth doing a video on it. Um, maybe it can help out some other reefers that were like me, not quite understanding what was going on with the tank. So. Um, First of all, I'll get into that in just a minute, but um, I did some uh, different aquascaping so I can get more flow around the tank. So um, what I did is I put my A cans over here where there's a little bit less light. I'll show you the, the other side in just a minute. So there's less flow and less light on this side. So let me show you the other side of the tank. All right, so here's this side of it. Um, I'll show you the aquascape and what I was trying to accomplish with it. So. And I do like that overhang right there too. And I like this open area. So um, I'm not quite sure what kind of corals I'll put in that open area. Uh, there's a lot of flow in, in this area. So what I was trying to accomplish with this aquascape is um, I was getting a lot of uh, buildup on the bottom. And I still have it because I was cleaning. But so what happens, uh, what I've done with this is, see the fish just came through there? That is kind of like my my uh, water stream under the rocks. And I'll show you how I did that in just a minute. Let me go to the other side. Oh, first let me show you the power head up here. So this one's top left corner. The other power head's gonna be the bottom right corner of the tank. So I get water, you know, tr flowing in a circular motion through the tank. Let me show you the other side real quick. So here's the other side. Um, I am going to move this I just need a different spot for it and um, I did move it that's why a lot of the zoos are closed up right there so that and this one um, they were needing more light for the zoas and uh, so what I did was so this power head here is going to that rock in there is for a directional to shoot the water straight through the whole rock, the rock structure and it's so the water's traveling under, <clears throat> under here, under all this, and I've got some um, areas where it collects. So there's some dead spots at the end of the tank, but that's fine. I kind of want it to collect in one area instead of all over under all these rocks. So that was a thought process on that part. Um, at the at the end, I want to go over something else, but at the end, I'll show you the a top down view as well. So let me go in the end view because this is one of my favorite views of the tank I have a lot of color just all all through there so what was going on with the tank um, I was having a bacterial bloom and it was caused by me and my faulty test kit so what was happening is um, the uh, not a solid food but it's that other one um, AP, API I had a uh, <clears throat> nitrate no it was a solid food nitrate test so I was testing with that and there was something wrong with the test kit. It wasn't outdated, but just something was just not quite right with it. So I never knew that my nitrates were like super low. <clears throat> and uh, sorry, I got a cold. I'm a little bit under the weather. But so my nitrates were uh, super low, under five. He said at the fish store. He thought because you know he really couldn't tell that there was nitrates in the water. And uh, so what was happening is when I set up my pellet reactor. If you guys watch the other videos and stuff. I was uh, start out slow, built it up, and just packed it full because I'm thinking the nitrates are high. You know, I, I, I uh, gradually went up, but then I had it up to like, let's say a thousand milligram or a thousand, uh, yeah, I think ml or something, milliliter, whatever it is, uh, for, the, for the tank, thinking, you know, got high nitrates, I need a lot of pellets, so I worked it up that. As I kept the more I put in there, the worse and worse things got. And the, so um, I really didn't catch on right away to what it was until the fit. So I did a test at the fish store. Uh, or they did a test for me, I should say. And what was happening is my nitrates were showing like around 50 to 80 on, the, on my test kit. And, and they were, like I said, zero or near zero from their test kit. So that explains why I was having <clears throat> such an issue with... <clears throat> just like it was like a slimy sludge and it was brown in color and the things that um, I want you guys to 
to take from this video is um, when you add too many uh, bio pellets, of course your nitrates will be zero, but that's what you want. But how do you know when there's zero and then when there's excess pellets in there and you're just creating a bunch of sludge inside the tank? Well, you'll know because your protein skimmer uh, will, be, will not really go crazy, kind of go crazy in a sense. It'll, it'll just cl collect so much stuff. And it's brown, it's brown uh, color, mine was anyway. And my uh, socks, I have nylon socks. So every day my socks had to be changed or they completely plugged. And it was like the slimy film that was, that was plugging the pores of the socks so the water wouldn't go through. And I put filter floss in there because I'm like, you know, it's collecting so much I need some filter floss. You know how I run it. So I have, uh, you know, the combination. It's easy to change out that way. Just rinse them out. They don't need felt socks in there. So every day those things were just completely plugged. And so that's, that's kind of a, that's a key to, you, know, you have too many pellets in there. Um, so I just had way too much uh, bacteria and, and, and uh, those pellets were just like melting themselves and you know, it was coming out in the water. Um, it did this to, the corals really, or the softies and the, well, the zoas and the, and the acans, uh, they just receded, like not receded, but they were just, they just seemed a little smaller now but they're uh, they're bouncing back uh the bird's nest uh took a heavy hit because the water was actually really dirty with all the nutrients inside there so so this guy took a hit um there's a couple little things maybe i don't know if i should just let it take its course and see if those things grow out i'm not i'm not sure i haven't had sps this was my first one it was only one little uh one little stick and it grew pretty good over the year but so that's that's what happened to it. So excess nitrate or excess uh, nutrients in the water. <coughs> Pardon me. Hang on. Let me pause for a second. Cough. Sorry. So that's what it was. I was uh, choking my tank off with too many pellets in there, and um, so it's it's bouncing back. Uh, my pellets are completely offline. And uh, another thing I want you guys to know is um, when I decide to go bare bottom. I knew already that, you know, that would affect the whole system. My, I, I figured, you know, I take out the substrate, you know, it's probably eating some of the nitrates that's in the water. And so I slowly took it out. When I got down the last third of the uh, of tank over here, of the substrate in this area, I took it all out. And I knew, you know, at that point, I was gonna have, you know, a little bit of issue with stuff. So what happened was, um, either that, that test kit is just completely, I mean, it is bad. It was proven that it's bad, but, um, I, I, this is just my guess. The nitrates that was all the sludge that was trapped in that substrate was completely taken out of it, out of it. And all, that also helped clean the water up. Then that's just, that's just my theory, but it's not, there was no testing to be able to prove that, but that's what I think was going on. With that, that's why my nitrates were so low. Well, the pellets, you know, excess pellets too, but um, I guess that helped. What I'm trying to say, that helped clean up the water as well. And uh, so right now I'm not going to run any pellets for a little while. Um, I've got another test kit I need to order. And I'm just going to watch the, the nitrates to see how they, they act without the pellets for a little while. And then if I do run some more pellets, which I probably will later when, when they start showing up again, is uh you know just keep it real low and not overdo it this time all right i think that's uh my memory's almost out for the video i just wanted to share that with you guys all right thanks for watching oh and uh i wanted to say it for the end i i have some bad news on the the clown babies one day they they just disappeared they had eyes uh developed and everything and i think it was day six or seven and they disappeared so not quite sure if they hatched and they're still in the water column. I, I just don't know what happened to them. But uh, I'll keep you guys updated when I get that new little clown baby tank going. All right, thanks for watching.